Okay. Um, well, Vikings Spy Week, it's over. We're back to game action. We got Dallas coming in tomorrow night. Halloween night, Sunday night football. Um, so nothing really big happened with the Vikings over the bye week, or at least since the like the last weekend. Um, you know when they made the, the they made that little weatherly trade, and um, but nothing really happened. Um, their injury situation is looking pretty solid. I mean, you know, obviously you, you expect coming out of a bye week that you should be pretty healthy. And I think they are. Michael Pierce is not going to play again, though. Um, he's still got an elbow injury that he's dealing with, you know, so that, and obviously Peterson, um, but is out too. But, um, you know, as far as Pierce, you know, when you have that kind of thing and he, and he comes off a bye and he's still hurt, you start to wonder, is this going to be like a whole season type of thing? Um, but, you know, overall, I think, I think they can feel pretty good about where they're, where they're at with health. Uh, that's what, uh, a couple other guys are on the injury report, but, but they're not starters. Um, obviously the big thing coming into this one is the, the so-called mystery over whether or not Dak Prescott's going to play. I don't buy for one fucking second that he's not going to play. I think this is all just something that, that, that could be turned into stories during the week leading up to an NFL game. I don't think there's any chance in hell that that Cooper Rush is going to be the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys on a nationally televised Sunday night football game. I don't I don't I don't buy it for one second. <laughs> and I'm not saying like the league is going to tell them to play Dak Prescott, but I'm not not saying it. I mean, I just I just don't buy I don't, I don't buy it for one fucking second that that Dak Prescott's not going to play. Um um cuz I I mean I haven't been following the Cowboys. I mean, I don't believe he missed any games. I think he's played all their games. I don't even remember who they played um, in their last game before the bye. But you know, I just, I don't buy I don't buy it for one second. That, but there's some Vikings fans out there who are freaked out because oh my god, we're going to play a backup quarterback and we always lose to backup quarterbacks. I've I've seen that fucking narrative and that that little tall tale repeated so many times recently. You know, just you know, just in the last week or so. Like, it's fucking bullshit. We don't always lose to backup quarterbacks. We have lost a couple of games in the Zimmer era when backup quarterbacks have been in there. And I guess if you want to count Nick Foles in a fucking championship game, he was a backup. But, I mean, you know, like, they keep bringing... I keep, they always bring up that Chase Daniel Bears game from a, a couple years ago. It's like, we scored six points in that game. We didn't lose that game because Chase Daniel was a backup quarterback and we got killed by a backup quarterback. You know, and even last year, like, yeah, we played Dallas last year. We lost to Andy Dalton. I mean, not, we didn't lose to Andy Dalton. We lost to the team that Andy Dalton was playing for. But you know what I mean. Um, but let's just this a little bit. Um, you know, but it, it's, it's one of these narratives that Vikings fans just, they believe. I don't know why. They want to believe it. It ain't, it ain't true. <laughs> we have one. We have lost games where backup quarterbacks have played. We lost to the Chief, to the Chiefs a couple years ago when Matt Moore was was playing instead of of um, instead of Mahomes. Did we lose because of the backup quarterback? It, it, it's it's mostly the Zimmer haters who bring this shit up because they want to just find excuses to trash Zimmer and they say, oh, he, he loses to backup quarterbacks. It's not true. Um, you know, we 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 have lost games to backup quarterbacks. We don't lose games to backup quarterbacks at a rate higher than anybody else. It, you know, once in a while, it's going to fucking happen. You know, and go back to 2017. We won a lot of games with a backup quarterback as well. Um, so, I don't know. That's just, it's just a BS narrative. But there's a segment of Vikings fans who are paranoid as hell that if Cooper Rush is the quarterback for the, for the Cowboys tomorrow night, we're going to lose because of that. Like, no, if if Cooper Rush is the starting quarterback for Dallas tomorrow night and Dak Prescott doesn't play, we're not going to lose because we're playing a backup quarterback. We're going to lose because, you know, we don't play well. Um, so, I th but again, I think this, I think it's really a non-story. I think it's, it's one of these things that the NFL hype machine, you know, hypes up during the week because it gets more attention. 
on, onto a onto a game, and they they, they you know they want to you know, get a lot of attention. Like, hey, we've got the Dallas Cowboys in Sunday Night Football. You know, ooh, who's gonna play? Tune in and find out. Like, we know who's gonna play. I I would it's 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 ninety five percent that Dak Prescott's gonna play. I don't care what anyone says. And you know what? If he doesn't play, then I'm wrong. And I certainly would think, you know, if he doesn't play, that's good for the Vikings. I mean, obviously, like if you if you have to if you have to you know play Dallas and it's a tough matchup, yeah, you you you're definitely going to rather have a backup quarterback, a very inexperienced backup quarterback at that, you know, playing in the game. It doesn't mean we'd win. It's, they still have a lot of players. Like you still got to go out there and, and perform. And we obviously, you know, most of the game against Carolina, we were kicking their ass, but we, you know, we let Sam Darnold lead a 96 yard touchdown drive in the final moments. So it's not, it's not, you know, we can win if it's Dak, we can lose if it's Dak, we can beat them if it's Cooper Rush, we could lose to them if it's Cooper Rush. It's just, it's, it's about how the Vikings play. And I think the Vikings are going to come out and play really well. I'm, you know, I think they're pretty fresh. Obviously, the home field advantage matters. You know, we lost to Dallas at home last year, but there were no fans. So, um, you know, I, I've i been saying this kind of for weeks and hasn't quite happened yet, but, you know, I think this team is ready to, to really show, like, it's A game. I don't know if they played necessarily their A game yet. I think they played a lot of B games. Um I don't even think last week before the little late collapse it was necessarily an A game. But, you know, I think they're ready to to, to really blossom. Um, and, you know, everyone's freaking out about these these four games out of the bye. And I'm not. I think, like, I don't think they're going to win every game. I, I absolutely do not think they're going to win every game. Um, I'm officially picking them to beat Dallas. I think it's going to be in the, you know, that... 34, 31, 35, 31, 38, 34 type of thing. I think they're going to put up a lot of points. I think this offense is 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 kind of humming, um, and they're re- and they're ready to really, really take off, and they're healthy. You know, Darisaw's getting some experience. He's in there now. If, you know, if Oliudo doesn't uh, commit like eight holding penalties again, I think they're going to, you know, consistently move the football. I think they're going to put up a lot of points. I think Kirk has been playing great, and I know that'll, that'll be the other narrative that comes like, oh, it's Kirk Cousins playing in primetime. Her, 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 he can't win in primetime. It's all bullshit. His numbers in primetime games are actually better, I think, than, you know, cumulative, cumulatively than, like, in, in non-primetime games, but against the QB wins. I just, I, I, Every single fucking time someone brings up QB wins, I just want to smack them in the face because their 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 argument is dead. DOA instantly when you bring up QB wins to evaluate quarterbacks, it's just bullshit. But you know, Patrick Mahomes as technically is a losing quarterback right now. Does that mean he's a bad quarterback? Give me a fucking break, man. But you know, we'll we'll hear that. You know, if 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 the Vikings lose. You know, 34-31, but Kirk plays a great game. It's going to be, oh, Kirk can't win in prime time. Da, 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 da. Can't beat a winning team. Da, 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 da. It's, it's going to be all the same fucking narratives. And these and, and look, these people are fucking hoping that that happens. Like, these people want, the, you know, the Kirk haters, the anti-Zimmers. They want the Vikings to lose so they can dredge up all their favorite narratives that are all BS, but they want to bring them up. Um, and, of course, that's another thing. If Prescott doesn't play and the Vikings win, They'll get no credit whatsoever. They'll they'll just say, "Oh, well, we didn't beat a winning team. We didn't win a primetime game. We we beat a backup quarterback. So that everything else doesn't matter." It's, it's one of these it's one of these you know heads you lose, tails you lose situations. Um, and then of course, if if Prescott doesn't play and we lose, oh my God, it's it's going to be it's going to be back to DefCon one with the whole franchise. This is what these people want. I don't know why they want it, but. I, mean, I guess I, I guess I know why certain media people want it because they feel like negativity generates views and clicks and engagement. But, um, but you know, I think they're going to play well. Obviously, the defense is going to is going to. You know, I don't think they're going to be in shutdown mode. I mean, you don't have Patrick Peterson. 
And, you know, Peterson's been kind of quiet, but that's good. You kind of want him to be quiet. You want your, like, your top corner to be quiet because that means they're not completing a lot of passes on on you on that side of the field. You know, it's not a lot of big plays. You know, obviously this is going to be a big, big game for Dantzler because um, he'll be starting. And, you know, it's, it's kind of his time to shine. You know, he's he was mad. He was mad, you know, early in the year that he wasn't getting getting on the field, getting the playing time. Well, here's your chance, kid. Um, and I think he'll play fine. Like I thought they're not going to shut anybody down. They're not this over these next few weeks. They're not going to shut anybody down. There's not going to, they're not going to be winning any of these games. If, if they win them the next four weeks, they're not going to be winning 20 to 17. It's all going to be in these, you know, 34, 31 type of games. There's going to be, you're just, you're just going to have to have a really good productive offense over this next month. And I think they will. Um, and I frankly would be shocked if they don't. I would I would be very shocked if this offense suddenly went the other way. Um and hopefully, you know, Kubiak and, and Zimmer and everybody has, has spent the spent the two weeks really kind of, you know, breaking it down. What do they say? You know, the self scouting. Hopefully they've done a lot of that and they've kind of figured out, you know, here's the things we're not doing well or or not doing right and here's how we can fix them and do them better and I mean that's coaching that's adjusting during the season adjusting during games and I think they will I think you know I don't think they're going to be you know putting up 50 points a game but I think they can you know we, we've seen them put up you know 30 plus we've seen them you know, you know, be very productive I think that it's just about being more consistent throughout the game you know that they, they've had a lot of like three and out drives they've had drives that you know, get killed by a penalty, you know, you can't have that. You can't have that against, you know, in games like Dallas and Baltimore and Green Bay and the Chargers and, and even the, the the lesser teams that we play after that. You know, those games matter too. Like we were, you know, I guess good as seg as any, we're probably playing for a fucking wild card because after seeing that fucking bullshit on the Thursday night game, holy fucking shit, man, what are you doing, Arizona? Fuck you. Like that that sums it up, doesn't it? The two look you know, the two the two games we lose at the beginning of the season that we shouldn't have lost. You know, we lose at the we lose at the Bengals, and then we lose to the Cardinals on a missed field goal. And those fuckers in Green Bay, they get like four chances at a game winning field goal because <laughs> the Bengals give them that many chances. And then at worst the Cardinals are going into OT, you know, with a chip shot field goal. And the f- fucking receiver doesn't turn around, and they just get the easiest end zone interception you are ever gonna see. That was easier than Malcolm Butler. That was the easiest game ending interception in an end zone that you will ever fucking see. And of course, it goes the way of the Packers because they, you know, look, I picked the Packers to win the Super Bowl before the season. I'm not, I wasn't expecting the Vikings to beat them out for the division. I, you know, I was expecting this to just be a season in which probably where the Packers get everything they want but god damn it it's it hurts man it hurts that it's not even November yet and it and after that shit Thursday night it feels like the division is gone I mean it ain't mathematically gone we still get them twice but we also are behind them you know I mean and, and our schedule you know their schedule's toughening up they got to go play the Chiefs now next week in KC but you know the Chiefs aren't what they were so you know Man, it fucking sucks that 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 you know, it's you, it's almost like a loser's lament if you say, "Oh, it's luck." Well, it is luck. Are you kidding me? Look at look at the way look at, just look at those four games. Are the two games we should played against the Bengals and the Cardinals, and tell me that it ain't luck. You know, it's fucked up, but you know, there's two ways to get in the playoffs. One's one's winning the division. One's getting the wild card. I broke it down after the bye week. Like I'm telling you, we are we are easily the best team that is, you know, not in the lead in a division. I mean, other than the Rams, I guess. Or Rams might actually be in first place now because the Cardinals lost. Although I think the Cardinals beat the Rams, so so. But we're definitely the best of the, <laughs> I guess, the second tier NFC teams. I mean, I know that ain't that ain't the goal to be the that you know, you know the 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 best of the of the of the the also rams i don't think the vikings are an also ran but you know i think you know they do what they need to do 
get in the playoffs. They can be a very dangerous team in the playoffs. And I think they will get in the playoffs, but, um, you know, it starts with the Dallas game. You know, you got to beat them. You got to get, you got to get these wins in conference. You know, I don't think you're going to be competing with Dallas for a playoff spot because I think Dallas is probably going to run away with their division. But, you know, you got to get these conference wins. You got to beat the teams that are going to be in competition with you. So, like when you play the Bears, 49ers, even Green Bay, maybe, like you got you got to beat those teams. You got to, you know, those are the those are the ones that are the most important. Um, but you know, it all starts with the Dallas game, and I think the Vikings are going to win this game. I think they're going to come out and play really well offensively. I think they're going to give up points on defense, probably regardless of who's a quarterback. But again, I think it's going to be Dak Prescott, and I think it's all BS <laughs> that he's not going to play. Um, and you know, we'll go from there. If you can get get above five hundred, boy, that would be an accomplishment after starting zero two to be you know. As the calendar turns to November, you're over 500. I think that's I think that's you know something you can hang your hat on early in a season and still early. Um, but uh, you know, I, I I expect the Vikings to play very well, and I expect them to win, and I expect them to do better over this next month than a lot of the doomsayers want to believe. Um, and you know. Schedule lightens up a little bit then after that, but obviously you don't want to be like, oh, well, these other games aren't going to be tough because we almost lost to Detroit and Carolina, so they're all going to be tough. This is just going to be that season. It's going to be a season where they play a lot of these games. You know, I think if they played a little crisper, you know, clean clean some shit up that's, that's plagued them at times in the you know, in the season to this point, I think they'll maybe be able to win some of those games a little more comfortably. But if they if they could win games easily, they wouldn't be the Vikings, would they? So, um, so I'll wrap it up. Uh, yeah. So I'm going like 34, 31 Vikings, um, with or without Prescott, you know, for the, for the bad guys. Um, and then we'll go from there and we'll get ready for Baltimore.